Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we begin the 24th week of Ordinary Time, and we enter into the last 11 weeks of Ordinary Time. Let us be filled with your Spirit as we can continue to seek to glorify you in our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, we're continuing through the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, and we're in the 11th chapter. Now, this is an interesting citation we're going to look at here because Paul is talking about the gathering of the people. Maybe I should add here, the early masses were actually in house churches. So what happens is you have, you know, you don't have a lot of people in the community because you realize to become a Christian is a huge step in the early days because you actually end up turning your back behind your family traditions, whether you are a Gentile or a Jew, and you follow a new path and you uh, associate with new people. So this is a very radical step for many people. And of course, radical, by the way, we hear the term today, radical, oh, you know, those are radicals. Well, actually, the word radical comes from the Latin word for root, and, and radical literally means changing to the root of something. So you're literally changing your whole spiritual life uh, right to the root, because you've left the Gentiles or you've left the Jews, at least the Jews that weren't Messianic Jews, and you followed a new path to follow. And this is what's happening. So the people are gathering and the early, so the early house churches, the early masses were in houses, and so they were house churches. So they were very small groups. You may have something similar to that. Uh, in China, where you have these underground churches that gather together secretly, and China, being an atheist uh, country, doesn't appreciate that, which is pretty sad, with all due respect to the Chinese and, you know, whatever. That's pretty sad that they, they wouldn't understand the great wisdom in Christianity. But anyway, that's the case. So, um, we have in this, these early centuries, of course, very small groups of Christians. So it wasn't like you had big cathedrals at the time for several reasons. Number one, many of them were small and were hidden in a sense. And for another reason was because there weren't many around, obviously, in the early days, again, because of this radical change. So now this is what uh, Paul is speaking about, about what these gatherings were called to be. And it's an interesting thing to look at because the gatherings were supposed to be uh, egalitarian. And that's an important concept for us to understand outside of politics. And here's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, the political idea, they're trying to make everyone uh, to be equal. Well, the reason why that can work in some sense within a religious community is your focus is not on the state. It's on God and seeking to do God's will. It's a whole different focus. It's why communism doesn't work because communism, as I just mentioned, is atheist. And so to whom are you answering? Well, you're answering to the state and the state does not understand because it understands on a human level, cannot understand who God is and cannot understand the reality of God. So you can't build an egalitarian society uh, within a concept that has no understanding of God. But within the Christian community, you still have some disparity of income, uh, which w was always the case. And this is one of the things that St. Paul is saying. We have to look at everyone uh, as all children of God, but you're not doing that. You've got your little party. You've got parties, not masses going on. You've got parties going on, and you've got the rich people celebrating in front of the poor people. That doesn't make any sense. And so he's criticizing them for that, for not understanding, first of all, the sacredness. Of, I, well, I shouldn't say that. They understand the sacredness of mass, but they don't understand the sacredness of gathering together 
and understanding that everyone is a child of God. And that's where he's, he's like saying, this, this has got to stop. You need to stop this. And then he starts to describe what we would call today the Eucharistic prayer, what happens during Mass. Now, as you know, the readings skip around. So there may be parts of the reading that you may read at one time of the year, or one time of the three-year cycle on Sunday that you don't see on the daily, the two-year cycle in the daily reading, and vice versa. So we're going to see a section that is not in the reading. I'm going to talk about that on the other side, where it talks about something that really affects people's lives every day. And so we want to give a better understanding of what it is that St. Paul is saying. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE 590 AM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Just don't forget that bullying is harmful because it causes deep emotional and psychological damage to victims, leading to anxiety, depression, and even suicidal thoughts. It negatively affects self-esteem and school performance, creating an environment of fear and insecurity. Furthermore, it perpetuates a cycle of violence and disrespect, damaging social coexistence. It is essential to combat bullying to promote a healthy, safe, and welcoming environment for everyone. Those who bully forget, but those who suffer will never forget what happened. This is a public service message from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're back, and we're talking about this powerful message uh, of gathering together in recognizing that we're all called to be equal within the concept of the Lord. The Lord. That means we don't build little cliques and have the rich people standing over one sa- one side and the poor people who aren't able to participate over another. It's it's not supposed to be that way. And this is what Paul is explaining because he says this, this is not working what you're doing. But then he goes and he talks about eating eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord. And he's talking about that in uh, verse 27. This is not part of today's reading. And what he says is that you, you cannot be doing this in an unworthy manner. Now, in the Catholic Church, what that is talking about is participating in a mortal sin. So, in other words, if you have a mortal sin and you uh, receive the Eucharist, well, that would be a sacrilege, so that is an additional mortal sin. But what happens is this becomes so legalistic that it leaves people in uh, terrible confusion, and it really is not supposed to be that way. Anything we do in the faith should not leave us in confusion. So they're saying, did I commit a mortal sin? Did I? Well, l- let me explain what a mortal sin is. And, and there are some people are going to disagree with me because they bought into a system, mostly coming from the Baltimore Catechism, which, as you know, I don't recommend, which listed a bunch of sins that were automatically mortal sins no matter what. And that is similar to what you see in our justice system when where the judge's hands are tied and they have to... Uh, give someone a certain sentence for a certain amount of time automatically, I forget what they're called, Um, and the judges complain about that because there are always these mitigating circumstances. So what a mortal sin is, is doing something that you know is something that God definitely does not want you to do. And I'm not talking a minor thing. I'm talking you commit a serious act. I'll I'll give you a great example. Um, You... Uh, we'll, we'll say 
um, I, I was going to say one thing and then I said that wasn't going to work. So let's say, for example, that you have taken a medication that it says on the medication, do not drive. Under any circumstances, do not drive. Not even like you shouldn't drive. It says do not drive. And you take the medication knowing that you're not supposed to drive and you drive anyway. With And knowing that if you use the medication and you drive, there's more than an excellent chance that either you or someone else is going to be hurt or even killed. Would that be a mortal sin? Absolutely. What were your circumstances of, of the mortal sin? You knew you shouldn't have done it, and you did it anyway. That's really what you're talking about. It's a serious act that you know you shouldn't do it, and you do it anyway. And you don't have to do it. That's the other thing. You don't have to do it. You could call someone else to, to drive. So that's what you're talking in a mortal sin. It's something that the Lord does not want you to do and you do it anyway. And it has to be a serious thing. It can't be a minor thing. So, for example, people will ask, you know, is a white lie a serious sin? No, it isn't. And my mother gave the best example of it. If someone says, someone wants to see their boss and the secretary says, the boss is out, well, technically, that's a lie because he's sitting in his office. But my mother explained, no, what you're actually saying, and she said she learned that from uh, somewhere on TV, you're saying he's out to you. In other words, yeah, the boss is in the office, but as far as you're concerned, he's not. That's so. But anyway, if you say a white lie, that's not a mortal sin. But if you were to commit perjury, that's a mortal sin. Knowing full well that's what you're doing, that's a mortal sin. So you see, it has to be a serious act, and you have to choose it and not care when it comes time to receive the Eucharist. I don't care. I'm going to do whatever the heck I want. And this is that is a sacrilege. That is uh, that is something we must not do. And that's what confession is all about, to eliminate that. We'll talk more uh, tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed day. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com. And you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out. Come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.